How's that for a start? Hello, everybody. Welcome. How are all of you doing? We're going to be doing something slightly complicated today. But overall, it's a simple process. Oh, look at my OS debug output. Look at the rainbow heap. It's beautiful. <laughs> and look at this multiprocessing. Oh, it works. It works. Baug, it works. Today, we're going to be replacing recursion. You heard me right. That's what we're doing. Let's make an announcement. We are live. All right. We are replacing recursion today. This is more compiler work, but truthfully, we're just replacing recursion. Let's send our notification. Hey, look, I did it as the wrong account for the first time. Kill me. <laughs> Wonderful. Ain't that great? Yes, hello, everybody. Correct account now. Oopsies. <laughs> Alrighty. In any case, we're officially live. Grammar. Grammar to parser boy. The first chatter for the stream says, hello again. How are you doing, Grammar? You've been so active talking to Eternal Wild Fox. It looks like you're helping him so much. Make a lot of progress in his programming. He's going to make a parser now. Math parsers are one of the hardest things to do. I love that he is like, I'm doing algebra because that's intimidating. You got to there's a lot to do there, <laughs> a lot to unpack. How are you doing, Grammar Du Parser Boy? It's great to see you again. I start parsing tuples now. Awesome. For backlang? So, uh, what kind of tuples are you going to have? Are you going to have, like, uh, only two-sided tuples? Are nested tuples allowed? Like, can you have a tuple within a tuple? And also, like, are they, like, uh, the tuples that are, can have any length? Like, can you have a three-ple or a, a three, three-length tuple? Or are you doing the classic tuple, which just has two? Nested tuple and tuples can have any length. Ooh. So what makes them different from structures, if I may ask? Do they only allow literal types or... Or is it just uh, they're a fixed size object once you create them? It's kind of like an array with different types. Is that the idea? Versus a structure. More dynamic. Let me know if I'm going wrong anyway. <laughs> I really like when languages allow nested tuples. When they don't, it's, it's like, well, why... <laughs> Why even have tuples? Come on. But I think the the major uh, quality of tuples is that you can actually uh, return them pr from a function. So you can return two values from a function, but it's really just in one tuple. It's really powerful in, th in that case. Like, you can return a string and its length, or something like that, without having to create a whole custom structure. But yeah, today, we're going to be replacing recursion. Yeah, for this case. Heh <laughs> heh. Or for simple mappings. Absolutely, like an associative list. You can do very easily with tuples. Especially nested tuples. That's really sweet. So, currently, 
we have a problem in that if we try to parse an expression that uh, is really long, this isn't a problem yet, but if we tried to parse an expression that's really long, we would have a stack overflow. Because currently, we're just doing this kind of odd uh, call to parse expression from within parse expression. So if you can imagine, the stack actually looks like we call main, and then there's some child to that. And let's say main calls parse expression directly, like it does in our case. But then parse expression calls parse expression. And if that keeps happening, well, each of these little symbols here is a stack frame, right? This is a stack uh, backtrace. So the problem is stack keeps growing forever. Company mode in the scratch buffer. Still got to fix that. So you can see that if we had a very long expression, it would just uh, eventually have a stack overflow. That's no good. We don't like stack overflows. So what we, the idea is that to parse an expression, no matter how long it is, we should only call parse expression once. But how do we do that? Because we don't currently do that. We currently call parse expression within parse expression. So how can we like remove this call but keep the same functionality? Does anybody know? Anybody know what design pattern we are going to be using today? Commonly parsers, they don't make a big deal out of being recursive. There's literally entire styles of parsers called recursive descent. And uh, it's really not a big deal unless you allow for singular expressions to be very, very long, for example. Which is my plan. Because I would like to have a single function declaration, be able to have any amount of expressions without having to call parse expression on every single one. And then in each of those, if they have nested expressions, it just gets, you get closer and closer to stack overflow. And there's no reason to keep this data on the stack. So the, the data, the design pattern we're going to be using today is continuations. It's on the screen here too. We're doing a stack based continuation, right? So the idea would be that we already parse, well, we lex in a loop, right? So each token is handled in a very similar way. We just lex it and move on. And as you can see, other than initializing variables, parse expression doesn't do anything other than this loop. That's it. It's just this loop. So what we are able to do is basically just continue from wherever we need to be, but update where we are writing to, first of all, so our result would normally change, right? Because in this parse expression, our result would be the reassign expression that we allocate here, and not our result that is passed in the top level parse expression. Right? So, we need to change our result pointer to be, what does the reassign expression eventually become? It becomes a child of var reassign. So what we are going to do is kind of flip this on its head. And instead of getting the expression into a new node, and then assigning that node as a child. We're going to get a new node, assign it as a child, and then get the expression into that node. And in doing so, 
we will be able to take advantage of a continuation versus a recursive call, a recursion. And this will save us stack space and mean that we can never stack overflow. We can just heap overflow, <laughs> right? We can just run out of heap space if we, uh, if we spend a little bit too long. And I think that's really not going to require too much. Hey, Good Mallard says hello. How are you doing, Good Mallard? You've been with us a few streams before. I appreciate you coming back. How are you doing today? What brings you in to this replacing recursion stream? I don't know why I said it like an evil villain, but it was fun. So we lex from, we lex advance current token, token length end. So what does lex advance do? We lex from the tokens end. So if we give it current token, it'll lex from current token end, and it'll update the token. Fair enough. Let's go back to where we called that. So by giving it current token, is that what we give it down here in parse expression? We give it current token end as our source. Which means that our current token beginning and end gets set to source. Good Mallard says, doing good, doing some homework. Nice. That's awesome. I would, uh, I'm not saying do this. This is a bad example. But I would always do my homework in class. And then all the classwork I would do at home. Because the classwork was generally easier than the homework. So doing the homework at school was like, I can get help on it and do it. And it's not a big deal. And then the classwork is like, you end up turning it in like at the end of the week anyway, so who cares? Nolan. <laughs> okay. Nolan, first time chat. Not from a viewer, but for the stream. We have Nolan say, I feel like I've missed too much. <laughs> Cry face, aw. Could you give a quick five minutes review of all the files and what they do to get to where you're at? Absolutely. Let's do it. Uh, let's start in main.c, right? So... In main.c, we're just going to start. Main.c, first thing we do, argument parsing. So we have to make sure that these arguments were given, which are the arguments that we actually pass on the command line. So when we type uh, our whole thing, oh boy, this whole thing, right? And then run it, so this one. <laughs> This is our first argument in the zeroth position of this array. So then this is in the first position of our arguments array. And we pass it a file path to a, a file that contains our parsing, or our, not our parsing, our custom language source code that we have written. Nolan says, you legend. <laughs> of course. If you feel like you missed out, I can. It, it, it doesn't take that long. All I gotta do is say, yeah, here's what it does. We got this. Good Mallard says, smart, but our homework and schoolwork are the same. We get a project, which is an application we have to build. Oof. At least that's a little more real world. My school was like more of a joke. America, right? Oh, but so this long, big long command. Whoops, I just got rid of it. Ain't that a bitch. <laughs> Whoops. This big long command basically just says, uh, hey, build it. And then, oh boy. Build me a new executable, run that executable, and pass it a file path to the example source code. Good Mallard says, oh no, my school is still a joke, lol. <laughs> Yay. So... You can see that our actual command, we run the func executable, which is just what the executable gets called, and we give it the example 
source code. And if we look at the example, you can see that there's comments and expressions, like variable declarations. And if you actually look, you see there's a variable declaration of the symbol A to the expression int 69. It's initialized. And that's exactly what we have here. So you can see that we parse this file that we are passed on the command line using the argv argc. And we just have some helpers in file IO. If we take a look, it's a very simple file. <laughs> we basically have a helper to get the size of a file that's already open. And we have a helper to get the contents of a file as a byte string given a path. And that's effectively all we do. We just get the we just get a byte string of the entire file. This is terrible. It doesn't stream the file, but it's uh it's fine until we get like megabyte long files. So who cares, right? <laughs> Grammar to parser boy says, lol, I am wondering why my tuple parser does not work, but instead of matching closing paren, I have matched closing brace. Oh no, <laughs> the closing curly bracket. That's so bad. <laughs> I hate doing stuff like that. It's so common, though. It's so common in programming. All right, we are still doing our walkthrough for Nolan. So in main, we effectively just take our first argument, get it as a string, right? And uh, if we can do that, if it, this doesn't return null, then we have a bunch of stuff to do, right? Grammar says, yeah, it works. That's awesome. It's just that one change. It's normally like that. It's just like one byte, literally one byte in one file in one place, and you have to find it and change it. It's incredible. In any case, if we get the contents of the file we're given, we create a parsing context. So this goes to parser.h. And at the bottom, we have a parsing context, right? So types... We have an environment. Okay, now we go to environment.h. So we have an environment which just has a parent environment and also bindings. And this is actually a linked list, an array, basically. So this linked list of bindings holds AST IDs to AST node values. So this can be any type within the language or within the compiler internally, if that makes sense. So we effectively hold a, a mapping of IDs to values in a linked list of an environment. This will eventually be a uh, hash map, but we're not there yet. We just need it up and running, right? And uh, we have a helper to create environment, set in the environment, and get the environment. And there's stuff here documenting return values and such. Anyway. We have two environment, one two environments in the parsing context, one for types and one for variables. Those are basically used by the parser to deal, uh, to keep track of the scope which you are currently in, because by default in the language A is not defined. You just do A is uh, like eventually we tried to call A, or if we tried to say A plus two. A is not defined, so we have to declare A, and then after this point, we're actually kind of in a different language where A has a new meaning, right? Where A is now a variable, with the, that should actually be an integer 69. So that scope of A being an integer and initialized to 69 becomes a part of the context that A is a variable, first of all, and that it's an integer. And then we also need the types context to say, hey, an integer, this word here, that's actually a type that's of this size and uses this stuff. Vimi says, I can see you. Hey, Vimi, it's so good to see you. We have our OG donator, the first ever donator, Vimi, in the chat. Everyone give him a, what do you want? What do you want? You want a lol? You want a, you want a lurk? You want a, hey, he's got, <laughs> he waves to everybody. How's it going, Vimi? I'm so glad you're here. We're just going through the entire uh, program, kind of doing a rundown for Nolan, because he feels like he missed too much, and uh, I don't want him to feel left out. By the way, Nolan, any questions at any time, we can go deeper into a subject. 
I know I'm just skipping past things sometimes. So let me know. Happy face from Nolan. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Vimi says hi to Nolan. We are having fun today. Anyways, we create that context which contains our environments and such and our types. Hi, hi. <laughs> we create a program that will store our list of expressions at the top level. So the program is actually what gets printed out when we run. You see this program here. That's the same program that you see here that's created. So this node is here. And then we create an expression to parse into. This is going to change soon. We create an expression to parse into. And then if we get no error and we get this isn't the end of parsing, we don't get to the end of the file or anything, then that expression gets added to a copy of the expression, gets added to the program, and then we move on and write into expression again until we're done parsing or we reach an error, in which case we free all our memory and print out all of our stuff. And for now, we're doing some very basic, very, very basic code gen that is not even really code gen, which is uh, basically just, uh, you know, it's effectively just creating the file and looping over the expressions to prove that we can do it, but it's really not uh, not where we need to be yet, if that makes sense. We'll get there. But yeah, so you're reading over the full document bytes multiple times? No, I don't believe so. So let's go through that. The actual array of bytes, how do we treat it? So this contents array is a character array, really. It's a pointer, but it's a pointer to the beginning of a large array of contents. Vimi says, anyways, I was in a void of work and work for past few days. What's up, people? How's project going? I've seen Grammar to Parser Boy and Wild Fox active on Discord. Hell yeah. Yeah, Vimi. Okay, so it's been going pretty good. We uh, actually, if as you can see in the top right, we are actually very close to affiliate. So as more people hit that follow button, we're actually going to unlock subscribers, going to unlock VIP members. You're going to be one, Vimi. And... <laughs> We're actually gonna like have so much open up soon and we're gonna hopefully unlock some transcoding Hey, Nolan hits the discord. Be sure to say hi to him Hey, hear all those beeps. Those are good beeps <laughs> Welcome Nolan. We all love you and we're all friends here Be sure to keep that in mind in your choice of words uh, Should add that I should add like a rule section to the discord truthfully that just says, uh, be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. <laughs> no, but okay. Uh, yeah, Vimi, basically, we've done a lot. We're now able to actually compile. Here, I'll open up the example. Here, we'll do open up simple. We're actually able to compile this source code into this AST a program with a variable declaration, a variable reassignment with these expressions, and variable declaration with no initialization, a variable reassignment, which is assigned to 42. And then we actually reach an error, and we say we reached a redefinition of a variable b, which we do. So we, uh, we are starting to parse variable declarations and reassignments. We still have uh, like expressions to deal with. I gotta turn my phone on silent. We still have expressions to deal with, but other than that, we're doing pretty good. Like we have to deal with math, but math is easy. It's just operators, binary operators with precedence. Binary operators with precedence is not a big deal. I am really glad to hear Vimi is back. <laughs> that's, <laughs> oh, Vimi, that's so awesome. He puts the, uh, 
a Pepe racing behind a wheel emoji and says at Lenzor racing towards affiliate. <laughs> exactly. We're getting there so fast. It's going to happen very soon. All people have to do is hit that follow button and then like we're going to have a whole celebration. It's going to be fun. I uh, went on a walk this morning and I found a tomato plant and there was like ripe tomatoes on it. So I picked them. They're little cherry tomatoes and they're so good. I washed them off in the sink. They're delicious. Can recommend. Can recommend. <laughs> Vimi says, math is easy. Me at 4 a.m. thinking back to the days of university and algebraic methods course. Lamau. Math is easy, but oh boy, it's rough. Also, this is not good. Wonder why this happens. Some error there. It's fine. Maybe on purpose, even. <laughs> okay, so going back to Nolan's question, we were answering what do we do with these file contents, right? What does this do? What do we do? So what do we do with these contents? As you can see, we get a contents iterator. And this contents iterator is a pointer within this contents array. And we have to create an iterator so that later, when we're done with the file, we can free the contents. And honestly, we can do this just after parsing. It doesn't need to be down here. Does that make sense? So we can free the contents of the file we have to keep the original pointer to the beginning. So we create a copy that can point anywhere. So we can change this and kind of point within the string. What you gonna do when they come for you? Vimi just saying in bad boys in the chat. <laughs> if you didn't watch Cops at 3 a.m., were you truly a teenager? <laughs> in America, I should say. So with this contents iterator, we pass this to parse expression. But we don't just pass it, we pass the address of the pointer, <laughs> right? And this is so that when we are parsing, with this end pointer, right, it's a pointer to a pointer. This end pointer, we can dereference that memory that it points to. Let's see if we can find it. Oh yeah, we pass it in expect. So if we go look at expect, you can see that in <laughs> Lex, here, let's do Lex advance because that's the first one we do. You see Lex advance takes the end. So if we go to Lex advance, you can see that the end actually gets dereferenced and set to the end of the token after Lexing. So this pointer that we have in main.c, the address of it is passed all the way just so that it can be updated to the end of the current token. So that next time we call parse expression, it'll be at the end of the current token that we start looking for the next expression. Moralilu says, hey oh <laughs> Vimi says, yes, it's me, Mr. Distracto. <laughs> and Vimi says, at Moralilu, long time no see, hello. <laughs> So good to see all of you. In any case, this end pointer gets passed all the way just to be set to the end when it's dereferenced, which means that this pointer now is a different value and it points to the end and next time we parse, we can go around again. So you see that we have a pointer within an array and it does slowly get incremented to the end of the next token, end of the next token, end of the next token. So we don't actually ever loop over the file contents. We loop over until we run out of lexing, right? If this happens, or if token length is zero is another thing, right? I think that's somewhere, yeah. If token length is zero, that means we're done parsing or done lexing. So there's nothing left in the file or the string we were given, if that makes sense. Eventually, we will have like a, uh, a parse file helper, and it will go 
basically read portions at a time and parse that incrementally instead of uh, dealing with one big string. Nolan says, thank you, Lens. I have a better understanding now. Awesome. That's so good. I'm glad I could help you out there. Because I knew it's, uh, the pointer to the pointer thing gets a little confusing, but it's just so we can keep track of the end. And then what, what really confused me at the beginning was, this is a pointer to a pointer, which we also pass. But this passing of the argument gets copied to the stack. So this source pointer, even if we change it, won't change the original because this pointer gets copied to the stack and this is just an address. So then we get the address, but not the address of actually this variable, which is what this is. It's insane. It's a little insanity, but it's, uh, it's the amount of indirection that's needed on the hardware level. So it makes sense, you know? Uh, so now, this is currently how it works. We went through it. I think we did it. And then at the end, we just print the program out, which I think is understandable. You print the contents of the value of program, and then you print all the children. And then each of the children have their own type that print themselves and all their children, and you end up with this. Then generating code, we get unknown unknown, which isn't great, but we do get integer. So at least we are getting <laughs> the proper type for these variables, which is what this is. We're doing okay. We're doing okay. <laughs> v me. <laughs> Says one day lens will be like Linus Torvalds, maybe a bit less salty when it comes to NVIDIA. <laughs> maybe. It's true. I am running an NVIDIA card, so I don't have too much against them. They, uh, they don't go bad that quickly for me, so I have fun with them. I was a gamer for a long time, too. Thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in. We've been streaming just over a half hour. I want to remind everybody that we have the uh, Discord link down below where you can actually go and get announcements every time I go live, hopefully from the right account next time. And... Uh, you can just come and hang out. We all have a ton of fun. We can help each other with our... Yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. I like. I like. Make smile. But yeah, we all have a ton of fun. And uh, we can all help each other with coding problems and programming. And we all grow together. Just make sure to be inclusive and be nice to everyone. We are all friends there. There's also the YouTube if you want to catch any VODs that I've made previously. And then there's the donate button. I would greatly appreciate any and all donations, obviously. If you leave a message, I will read it on stream. And if you leave your username along with a message, I will attribute it to you and say the amount if you would prefer. So, I would just like to thank everybody for watching and lurking. We love the lurkers especially. Got that lurk. So, yeah, thank you. And let's continue. Let's try and actually replace some recursion, right? Because I do have to do a shorter stream today. But I believe we can get this done. <laughs> Vimi says, one day you might even see my awful code. So if you have a masochistic nature, drop on Discord and prepare your eyes for horror. <laughs> I'm excited. Seeing your code, that gets me excited. I'm ready to see it. <laughs> Vimi, unveil it. <laughs> Let the world see the horrors that you have dealt with. <laughs> I'm sure it's not awful code, by the way, Vinny. Everybody's code is awful. Look at this, like there's macros and it's, this is awful. This is a bad parser, but it doesn't matter, right? All that matters is I have fun doing it. Vinny, we duel. I bet my lisp is 800 times worse. <laughs> That would be hilarious coding challenges where you try and make the slowest program, but actually still complete within a certain allotted amount of time. Like, so aim for like a program that takes exactly one hour to complete a given task. And it's like some five, <laughs> some five different lists 
and print out the values <laughs> of each one. It's like print five sums of five lists with five elements in each one, but it must take an hour. And you have to write a program that doesn't use sleep, but does that. That would be actually really tough. <laughs> Vimi says, my code is so awful, my ISP literally cut off my internet for two days. <laughs> Little did they know, I run my local Git repo. <laughs> They're not going to stop you from developing. <laughs> you got that Raspberry Pi set up, baby. That Git T instance. Good Mallard is getting it. Coding challenge where the goal is to code bad. Exactly. Use every bad practice that you can. Fill your language with go-tos, right? Just do it. So, currently, we have a result. And it never changes. That's fine and dandy. But I think we're going to have a working result. And because this is a pointer assignment, these now point to the same node in memory, the same memory address. Like, instead of looping, you just hard code the same statement X amounts of time. You say that, like, that's bad code. That's actually good code. It's called loop unrolling. <laughs> and your compiler does it for you in every circumstance that it can. So that would actually create faster code. But it would be the, t the terrible code to write. You're right. Should the code be bad in terms of writing it or bad in terms of execution? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe just bad in terms of writing it. Maybe you're right. Like, you're not allowed to use loops. You have to use while <laughs> every time. <laughs> Vimi says, oh, that's easy. Just write bash scripts with a zero bash knowledge. Use said every third line. Oh, my God. And stir error when you need standard out. Oh, Christ. That's, that's like all the sins. The bash sins right there. You could be arrested for those atrocities. <laughs> So we now have a working result, and we would like to check out result and set working result instead of just result. So I don't think we can use working result here. I don't think that's OK. Is that okay? How, what is it before? Working result. Oh Christ, why is my mark activated? Stop, thank you. <laughs> or just write C with go to. That's right, I don't even remember how to do it. Like, is that how I do it? Is that, would this compile? <laughs> Oh, that's terrifying. It works. <laughs> so you can just use go-tos. Yeah. Simple. I think they're so much simpler to understand than conditional flow, right? <laughs> so now we write into working result. If it's not an integer, then... See, I feel like maybe this should be working result, but I don't know. Either way, to get the symbol, we're kind of going to need to allocate a node. So one way or another, we're doing this. Also, this memory is probably leaked. In any case, let's move on. We then expect, expect. And in this case, So we effectively need to allocate memory before we error, otherwise... Also, we can free this variable binding in this error case. There's a lot of things we can do. Mora Lailu says, you use Valgrind, right? I use Valgrind in a Linux VM when I am having major issues with heap corruption. <laughs> but I do use Valgrind for debugging as a Hail Mary. That is correct. The problem with Valgrind is it complains about memory leaks that don't matter. Like, if you just linked with SDL and then run Valgrind, tell me how that goes. <laughs> I just use it to find leaks. 
Yeah, their memory checker is very cool. It really allows heap corruption checks, but... <laughs> Nolan asks a question that starts with question. <laughs> question. How did you learn all this? Mainly the correct terminology of tokens, binding, etc. Any book or repo you'd recommend? Yeah. I can, uh, I can help you out. So a lot of my compiler knowledge and my parsing knowledge comes from Lisp. And if you actually take a look at my GitHub, let me see if I can get to it. Can you see this? Uh, OBS. You cannot see this. So that. If you take a look at GitHub, there's my text editor, Lite, and it followed this Lisp interpreter tutorial from this crazy website here, right? I'm going to post that in chat, and then I'm also going to add that to my, like, uh, Sure. Description. Make a lisp. Nolan says heart. Absolutely. But this incrementally teaches you how to create an actual lisp yourself just from the beginning. It, like, it, it assumes you know nothing. It gives you awesome links to see John McCarthy's history of lisp. Right? This is written by actually the creator of Lisp, basically, in 1979. Then you can look at the prehistory, the implementation of the original Lisp. And you can read words from like the people that created programming as we know it today. So you can see their ideas and how they were uh, conceptualizing it. And there's a lot of terminology you learn through this. Like, oh, R place A, what is that? But he actually goes through and says, okay, this is what it is. Numbers, right? Free variables. So much stuff. So that's that. That's like just one link in the first introduction, right? But then you can go data, and oh, here's an atom. Oh, it has... Does this look familiar? <laughs> this is exactly our AST, how it's defined, right? We don't have a recursive pair like Lisp does, but we don't need it. <laughs> Nolan says, perfect, thank you. I promise to not start reading until after your stream. Aw, you're so sweet. Whatever you are motivated to do, because if you're motivated to do it and your brain wants to, you can learn it, you can do it. Don't feel obligated to stay, but I do appreciate the sentiment. And uh, of course, I appreciate your attention. So, we are doing good, we are doing good. We just need to... Vimi says there's also a lot of material about Python interpreter. Ooh, that's a good one. I, I've never thought about actually making a Python interpreter because it seems like white space is something I don't want to deal with. I'm kind of scared of it. I just like skipping past it. <laughs> one dude did a funny talk about embedding Py2 interpreter into Python 3. Lamau, you could probably write Python 2 within Python 3 Now to, now that I'm thinking about it. And if you allow for, like, linking with libpython and calling Python from C, then it's like you can definitely do whatever you want. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody so much for watching. If you're enjoying, be sure to hit that follow button. Join the Discord down below if you haven't already. To make friends, be positive, and to get notifications every time I go live. So let's actually work on fixing this. This is backwards, as we said before. We know that we have a variable reassignment node that is valid if we get here. So at this point, we have a guaranteed, oh boy, valid reassignment expression unless errors occur when evaluating, when parsing the actual value expression. Good enough for me. So, with this, we will figure out how to do the stack-based continuation. So, this is a very simple one, and I don't think we even need a stack for this continuation. 
for this, we can just say that our result, right, it's going to be equal to the var reassign. So this whole thing is going to move up here. Confusing, but it will make sense very soon. I should have just cut instead of copy. But now we have this reassign expression. Is there? Nope, I don't have it in here. Huh? So now we're going to do a similar thing where we have the reassign expression and we allocate it as a node. Why are you mad? Previous definition. Oh, it's still down here. And the idea is that once this is done, this reassign expression pointer that we allocated here, so this pointer, the memory address that this pointer points, like the value of this pointer is what I'm trying to say. So the value of this pointer is now the memory address of this child. And we would like to say that our result from the top, our current result, is a reassignment. But we need to do further things. So we need now to say working result points to the reassign expression. So this child pointer, right? <laughs> Are you with me? So now our result is a reassignment but we dereference it. So the actual node that the working result points to is now a reassignment with all this data in these children. Then one of the children, the pointer to it, we set the result of the parser. So the actual pointer, we update the value of the pointer to a new memory address, which is this allocated expression and then we continue. And we lex once more. And then we parse once more. And uh, we're probably going to have to do some type checking of expressions, right? Make sure that uh, the assignment expression of a re variable reassignment is actually returning the proper value. So we're going to have to do type inference of the return value. Right? Which we would have, we had before as well. Still no type checking, just more expressions. So the idea would be that with this working result updated, next time we come around the loop, if it's an integer, for example, working result will be updated, and then we can return, and the actual result that we passed originally is a variable reassignment with a nested reassignment expression as a child, and a symbol even. <laughs> when you talk to your parser, do you even lex, bro? <laughs> For real. I do talk to inanimate objects a little too much in my life, I feel. So we fixed all that. So... Am I insane? Will this work? What did I forget, chat? Did I forget something? Do you know? <laughs> so current token should be after equals. And that's exactly where we need to start parsing for our reassign expression, so that seems fine. Every coder should have a rubber ducky. That's kind of obligatory. Hey, we got that one step forwards towards affiliate. We actually have all of the other three uh, requirements done. They're actually like complete. If I look at channel analytics, I have stream seven days per month, I have 13. Stream eight hours per month, I have 39. An average three concurrent viewers, I have 3.01. 
So all I need is 50 followers and then I will be affiliate. So I really thank you. Lurk, lurk, lurk. Woohoo! Yeah, V me. Get it. So Russ Jr. 08, thank you so much for following. I very much appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you're enjoying. Continue to lurk if you feel like it or say hi, ask any questions. We're all friends here and in the Discord. Everyone is accepted. I like that these are the same length, but they're different things. That really, that really gets me going. I get excited about that. Like when these equals line up, but these are different on the left side. Ooh, man, I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> I'll get you a... Yeah. Pause. That's better. We have a, uh, a lower bit rate today. Nobody has complained that it looks like crap, so I think we're doing okay. I think I may even be able to lower it lower at the risk of taking more CPU power for the compression. Awesome, it's still working. Look at that, it's still working. Chat. <laughs> Chat, wait. <laughs> do you realize? Chat, do you get it? It's still working. We just changed it. There's no more recursive call. We just use a continuation. No parse expression is no longer called. But it still works. We parse another expression. Chat, we did it. Chat, can I get a pog? Pog, it worked. It worked. Pog. <laughs> hey. Oh, we got a pog champ. Hell yeah, we just got a pog champ from Nolan. <laughs> Vimi says, it's done. We're done. We did it. The compiler is complete. Look at this amazing program. Look at this code it generates. It's incredible. <laughs> Woohoo. Oh, we got a craygasm from Vimi. Oh, we got a pog champ from Good Mallard. Hey, oh, everyone's having fun. This is awesome. It actually works. Wait, they changed the pog champ emote? I know, it's so sad. It's so sad. That's cringe. Yeah, it's, it's a dinosaur now. It's like, eh. We gotta find... Okay, we can have custom emotes as soon as we get to affiliate. I think we can have five custom emotes when we get to affiliate. I vote that I just create the old PogChamp and call it, like, PogChamp1 or something like that, right? <laughs> and then everyone can just use the original PogChamp. <laughs> I feel like that's the goal here. Unless they're, like, against that. I know there's emote attribution now. OgChamp. <laughs> like OG Champ. That's so good. We're going to... Og... <laughs> OgChamp. Oh gee. That's so good. V me, I really like that idea. Og champ. <laughs> We're definitely gonna do that. That's a good idea. <laughs> oh, we're having so much fun today. Alright, alright. What do we do? What do we do? We actually did it. The ti like roll credits. <laughs> Champog. <laughs> Nolan, that's really funny. Nolan says, Champog, the new, <laughs> the new Pog Champ. <laughs> at Vimi, we got Og Champ. <laughs> we got at Nolan with Champog. Ooh, they're the same length. I really like that. <laughs> why, why? Lens champ. <laughs> Let's go. I'll just have to like uh, try and <laughs> that would be hilarious. Just take photos of myself doing the pog champ face <laughs> and then call it lens champ. That would be hilarious. I'll just become the new pog champ for Twitch. It's fine. You can use my face instead. You don't have to use a dinosaur. <laughs> I'm gonna eat this tomato. Hmm. Okay, not me, thinking that actually worked. This is dope. <laughs> Do we call, we call parse expression in one other area, right? We do. And it's...
it's an interesting case. We have a value expression from somewhere. Yes. OK. Vini says that sweet, sweet tomato-ness. It's really good. I'm sure it's disgusting. I hate eating on stream, but tomatoes are good as shit. Little cherry tomatoes that you'd pick off of a plant. It's like there's nothing better. Eternal Wild Fox says, good evening. Good evening to you and good morning. How's it going, Eternal Wild Fox? How's your parser? What's going on? Are you still working on that? Are you working on the uh, assembler at all? He says, good. Awesome. Yeah. Hopefully you're doing good as well. I've been having a good morning so far. Ahoy! <laughs> says the <be> me. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> okay. Phone stuff. Yes. All right. What do we do here? We parse an expression into an allocated node. And then we just... So can we not just... OK, first of all, I'm going to just test how dumb this is in general. That should work, should it not? That works, OK. I'm like, wait, what's wrong with me? So I did some extra allocation there I didn't need to do. In any case, that's at least more simplified. Now we can get rid of this recursive call entirely. Eternal Wild Fox says, hello, Vimi. And I posted some screech, screech, I can't, uh, I can no longer read. What's up? I'm Taryn. I'm 19. And I never learned how to fucking read. Uh, I posted some screenshots on your Discord with screenshot from mine, Lexer, and Parser. Juicy, juicy screenshots, I would add. Ooh, we got to check this out now. We got to check this out. Where is? Where is? Somewhere is. Juicy screenshots. Here? Am, is my internet just slow because I'm streaming and I don't have them yet? Is this it? Ooh, no. Ooh, ooh, here they are. Yes, yes. Where is Eternal Wild Fox? <laughs> ooh. I wish I could full screen this. Did the picture really just not get bigger? I was going to say, like, I full screened it and it didn't get bigger. That's that's not a PogChamp. This is PogChamp. Ooh, no parsing errors. Doing index.php. Ooh, very nice. Very, very nice. <laughs> so it looks like you have some assembly as a constant string or something. And you create a lexer with the input as that constant string. So I assume this lexer now contains some state of tokens. Yep, and the parser takes the lexer. And then the parser parses, I'm assuming, the lexer that it takes in during construction. Second screen gives an error. Parsing errors. Ooh, nice. That's true. There was a parsing error. What was it? Jump V200? Versus jump 200, yeah. So I'm assuming jump needs an address and an 8-bit address. And V200, isn't that uh that's a register, like V2, V3. Slash user, slash bin, slash add eternal wild fox. <laughs> Lamau. That program bar is so wide. It's a little wide. Don't add them. <laughs> it's fine. Whatever, however people use their computer, right? That's acceptable. Wahaha. <laughs> it's so cool that we have so much going on. Uh, these are very cool screenshots. Like, you're actually parsing assembly 
for a custom virtual machine that you've written. Like, this is going to be so cool. I'm really excited. And you've actually, you've got it very good, uh, separated out very nice. I'm excited. I am excited to check it out. Yes. Thank you for letting me know about that, Eternal Wild Fox. That's really exciting. So you're parsing, you're parsing errors, and it's it's assembly for your custom Chip 8 uh, virtual machine. Like, that's so cool. That's so cool. No problem, he says. What What a humble guy. What a humble person. Eternal Wild Fox is just like, no problem. Anytime. So humble. Thank you, Eternal Wild Fox. You're the best. You are all the best. Thank you so much for watching. So we have a recursive call. What do we do to stamp out recursion? Does anybody remember? Does anybody actually know the solution based on what we just did up above? It's pretty uh, cut and dry in this one, luckily. We've created our var decal. We've set our result, which should be working result. to our variable declaration. Honestly, we don't need to allocate this node. Hear me out. Okay. Roger Zanoni says, that's cool. Yeah. We are stamping out the recursion. We're getting rid of it. One day, Eternal Wild Fox will decide that Chip 8 is too boring and he will create his own CPU. I'm telling you, he's one wild, wild fox. <laughs> yeah, Vimi, you are correct. Vimi said that, by the way. Vimi, I believe Eternal Wild Fox will eventually, like, go Super Saiyan. Eternal Wild Fox says, because this was my first lexer and parser, I'm going to program a math expression engine now to test some things Grammar Boy suggested me that. Nice. Yeah, doing a... It's probably good now that you've had a parser and a lexer under your belt. You can do, like, some operator precedents. Deal with binary operators and the hell that they induce. Infix binary operators. I am. I already have Ultra Instinct. Ooh, <laughs> he's already Super Saiyan. Do you hear that chat? Do you hear that? <laughs> we are eight followers away from becoming a Twitch affiliate. So if you are watching and enjoying what you see, please, please, please hit that follow button. We will get to Twitch affiliate. We'll have custom emotes. We'll have VIP members. It'll be baller. The world will open up for us. Alrighty. I like removing those little dances of removing the is that really not used shouldn't this be node free no it shouldn't because it gets filled with okay yeah variable binding is shell node for environment value on tense Sure. Had Eternal Wild Fox, Vimi says, I bet your theme song in this universe is Riders on the Storm. <laughs> That's right. He'll never give up. Never stop riding. <laughs> I think my theme song would be like, you know Rick and Morty, that like human music when they're in the simulation that's breaking down and he only has like 5% CPU, just the boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Something like that. I think that would be my theme song. It's just like the most boring introduction ever. But I ride in on like a tank with machine guns shooting into the air. So it's a really non sequitur. You know what I mean? Unexpected type of thing. So this recursive call is absolutely the worst. How can we get rid of it? I believe we can use continuations. And we don't even need a continuation stack. I think we can just say working result is equal to the value expression that we created up above. 
right? It's a none node by default. But the working result has a value expression as a child, so now the working result can be updated to that value expression. And then we should just be able to continue. And this will parse the next expression into the value expression of the variable assignment because we have an equals. And if we encounter an error, we encounter an error. Vimi says, I've seen that on Doctor Who. <laughs> I'm Doctor Who in this motherfucker. That's right. I mean, Time Lords, I would say I have two hearts, but only because uh, the first one withered away and died during my childhood. <laughs> the second one grew out of the dead one. And it's just making do. Eternal Wild Fox says, time for some coffee. Hey, absolutely. <laughs> okay, we're doing it. We're watching this on stream. <laughs> Vimi, you caused this. I hope you know this. <laughs> Ooh, what do we got? There he is. <laughs> there he is. Do not go Claire. Into that good night. You Clara. go, girl. That's my entrance. <laughs> Basically, this is Eternal Wild Fox. This is me. I kind of just show up and look around like, oh, man. Oh, this is awesome. Now that, that is an intro. <laughs> yes, all credit goes to the BBC for this office. This is not my book. <laughs> yes. Okay, V me, you are exactly right. This is how I would show up. On a tank, with an electric guitar. <laughs> just playing. But I'd be playing like the softest melody ever. It'd just be... <laughs> Just some little, little repeating melody. Landar says, not what I was expecting when I clicked on the stream. Hell yeah. We got Doctor Who with an electric guitar riding in on a tank to a medieval gladiator battle. That's what you get when you click on Lenzer's stream, baby. <laughs> How's it going, Landar? It's so good to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Vimi, for that incredible clip. We love you around here, Vimi. You're the best. <laughs> that was awesome. The cool part is we've actually done it. We no longer call parse expression anywhere in the parser. This is no longer a recursive parser. It is now a continuation-based parser, which I've never actually even seen. Has anybody been taught to create parsers this way? I've only ever been taught this from Lisp, like from that one Lisp tutorial that I linked and shouted out earlier. <laughs> but this continuation parsing style, I feel like I've seen it a lot in Lisp, but it's so rare to see in uh, tutorials. But you see it in mature compilers all the time. And it's, it's simple. It's just pointer manipulation in a different way, right? You just set where you're writing to, and then write there. It's much simpler than trying to parse inside of a parser. Vimi says, it's just rogue DevOps breaking that stream. <laughs> Kappa. I feel like the, anybody who works on DevOps is like secretly just thrives on chaos. <laughs> Maybe not so secretly even, but they just thrive on chaos. They're like, whatever, <laughs> whatever happens. I love it. <laughs> but we have actually succeeded at the title of our stream. We have replaced recursion in our parser entirely. We no longer have recursive calls and we now have continuations. It's beautiful. Our stack will no longer overflow. We can no longer overflow our stack chat, you understand. <laughs> it's so awesome. Look how much we simplified it, too. It's incredible. 
we removed more than we added, I feel like. Let's stage that. Give it a committee committee. Let's see. Let's call this parser. Removing recursion. Nolan says, beautiful, beautiful. Vimi, yes, we intentionally set up crone jobs to beat your <laughs> CI CD pipelines in random moments to glorify ourselves in the eyes of devs. <laughs> You're like, we'll set up a million jobs. <laughs> continuous integration, continuous deployment pipelines. I couldn't remember when I saw the letters, but I remembered then. Landar XT says, if your stack doesn't overflow, your stackoverflow.com account gets revoked. <laughs> Oh no, my all my questions that I get berated for asking and never get answered, <laughs> they're going to go away. Oh no. Um, no longer do the grips of recursion grasp our parser. The design, the continuation, sure, design principle has yet again. Is this? Uh, what should I say? Has yet again. If your stack doesn't overflow. Duplicate question. Asked in 2006 and all of the answers lead to dead links. Exactly. Here's a, li here's a link to the same question but asked in another language. <laughs> so it doesn't apply to you at all. It's so funny. Yet again. Saved. Saved us. All hail the non-growing stack. All hail continuations. <laughs> I don't know why this message turned into this, but it did. Vimi says, oh no, we only, <laughs> wait, I only have six silver and 16 bronze there. Whatever. <laughs> That's right. Okay, we have removed recursion. Look at this. Done. What is test.s? Oh, it's just my test. Okay. All right. This is exciting. I have nothing else planned for today's stream, so distract away. <laughs> Landar says, in order to ensure the security and continuing stability, the Republic will be reorganized into the first galactic empire for a safe and secure society. <laughs> Continuing stability. Do it. <laughs> Vimi says, do it. You have some beef stew? Stew it. I'm kind of fed up with this. Screw it. <laughs> Wasn't that a Game Grumps video? Is that what I'm remembering? Can definitely free that there. That's better. There's a little bit of an issue though. <laughs> what is that? Why do we have int eight all of a sudden? When did that happen? Chat, when did I screw this up? <laughs> it's fine. So int 8 seems to be the environment variable binding thing. It's only ever used here. Time to SVN revert equals. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Guess what I did? You screwed it up around 30 years ago. Damn, before I was even born, 
11 years before I was born, I was fucking shit up. <laughs> According to Landar. <laughs> oh. So I do this wrong. Yeah. That's okay. Get reset head. <laughs> uh, the best part is I just have to revert a commit. I would just do an interactive rebase with a squash commit. That undoes everything. Okay, okay, okay. So, new expression, right? Wow, did you see everything just bounce back and forth? What was that from? <laughs> Holy crap. Like, my whole screen just shook left and right. Landor says, no! Uga Sheka, Uga Uga. <laughs> Keep the old expression. <laughs> Never. No, we'll just rename it. We'll call it expression. How does that sound? <laughs> and then we're going to say... So we're going to have this pointer be our result and be a child of the program, no matter what. Which means that every node allocated will be a part of the program. So when we node free program, they should all be freed. <laughs> Classic. With code 116. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Let's make sure. Do a few different tests. Talking about child, I'm taking baby steps into compiler parser design. <laughs> Nolan said, it looked like an earthquake it localized entirely inside your monitor. It did. Eternal Wild Fox says, going to program an online math expression engine. Now I'll keep lurking. Booyah. Good luck on your math expression engine, Eternal. Those aren't necessarily baby steps. That's a big step. <laughs> Vimy is going off. Saying, you were supposed to defeat the Sith, not join them. You were like a brother to me, expression. And then he talks to Eternal. He is crazy. He will create his own CPU, I'm telling you. Lamau. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> Alright, what did we screw up? So, we allocate an expression... It can't be null because we have an assert in node allocate, which uh, we could deal with that better, but it's fine. We add the expression to the program and then write into it. And then we try and print the program. So if we don't print the program, don't free the program, excuse me. See, we have we have some major issues. We keep adding to the same variable declaration when we should not. So we are adding children. It's got to be just the working result being wrong. Because all of these point <laughs> to the same one, do they not? These all have the same contents. So we have this expression, we allocate it, add it as a child, parse into it. Parser. Landar says, well, Lenzer, you're an odd fellow, but I must say, you knew a good expression. <laughs> I'm definitely odd. Vimi says, and it will be like a 128-bit system. Eternal Wild Fox says, 128 bits? No, we skipped that. Vimi says, with blackjack and, you know, hookers. <laughs> Lendar says, 256 bits. No compromise. 128. <laughs> We're creating new CPU architectures in chat. There's probably enough like minds. It could, it's doable. So maybe it's this working result type of thing that's going wrong. So... 
continue. See, working result should have already been set here. And it's dereferenced with this. So it's typed as set. It's definitely dereferenced in add child. Parent is modified. New. Ch so this is used verbatim. Symbol is newly allocated each time. Value expression is newly evaluated each time. Then we say, okay, bind it in the environment. Then we say if there's an equal, working result equals value expression and continue. Is it really that simple? I think it is that simple. What do we do up here? We free var reassign. So we allocate a node and then fill working result with the See, why can't working result just be an allocated node? Why does var reassign have to be a thing there, right? That's kind of what I did down here. I said, okay, our working result is now a variable declaration. We have a value expression. <laughs> Vimi says at, at Landar, yes, my lord, 256 bits, no compromise. Vimi says, I really need that stormtrooper voice modifier. <laughs> Got them. That's right. Just that little, like, walkie-talkie crackle, just a little bit. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Thank you, especially Vimi. You have been so positive today. I really appreciate your presence. I'm glad you're back. Thank you, Landar, Eternal Wild Fox. Who else did we have? We got Nolan in here. We got so many great, great people, and I really appreciate all of you. Good Mallard. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. We've been streaming nearly an hour and a half, and uh, I just want to mention, if you want uh, notifications every time I go live, be sure to check out this Discord. And uh, every time I go live, I make an announcement, hopefully from the right account next time. And uh, yeah, we all have fun. We're all friends here. And it's just a, a good old fun time. I really recommend it. Plus, you get notifications every time I go live. Whereas if you follow which I would greatly appreciate as well, follows on Twitch. There is no notifications every time I go live. About 50 to 60% of you get notifications when I go live from Twitch itself, based on follows. But uh, Discord will be 100% of the time if you want that to happen. So yeah, thank you for listening to my little spiel. Check out the donate button down below if you are feeling especially generous. I would I greatly appreciate any and all donations. Be sure to leave a note if you want me to read it on stream and say the amount, and leave uh, your username in the note if you'd like me to attribute it to you. So uh, yeah, thank you, and I just want to shout out, we actually have our OG donator, the first ever donator, in the stream right now, Vme. So thank you, Vme. Everyone uh, bow down to him. <laughs> He's the VIP. <laughs> Vme, both the sleeping Pepe. That's right. He loves it. He's all cuddled up. <laughs> Thank you, Vimi. We love you. And you're so positive. You make us all laugh. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Anyways, uh, we replaced recursion and we broke a bunch of things. So let's try and now fix a bunch of things, right? So what did we have before? We had a Vardeckle. And then this happened to the Vardeckle. Right. Step one. Then we had Vardeckle. So let's actually do this. And then we said working results equals Vardeckle. That's better. That's better. I don't know why that's better, but that is better. Maybe we're not setting all the pointers in node allocate. We should be. Hmm. 
Yeah, we're, we use calic, so everything should be zero. So why? Why are you like this? Why could we not use working result, but we can use a new node? Hmm. Seems a little odd, but it does work now. For some reason, we have a type node found at the end when we have an error. I feel like this is just a uh, left over, <laughs> but I don't know. If you know how everything in your code works, where's the fun in that? You need that one spicy method in your life to spice things up. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You got to just, <laughs> I really like that idea. You got to add in like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going I'm to I'm call this node allocate. And hopefully it works every time, but just add in like a random number generator that says, eh, it fails sometimes. <laughs> okay. So maybe we should be a little more judicious about when we use working result. We would like to parse an integer into working result. My compiler would emit tuples if it wouldn't have a problem in my type system with generic types. Getting tuples and generic types working together sounds horrid. It sounds horrid, honestly. <laughs> when I fix it, it will work. <laughs> I don't know why, but I really like that sentence. When I fix it, it will work. Grammar to parser boy. So awesome. So backlang will have tuples. It's completely... Uh, being, it's working in the parser, but in the type checker, you still got to work on that stage. And I'm assuming code gen, or you did code gen. Eternal Wild Fox says, I wonder if I should create an SVN only, a subversion only for a library code, then I could include into other subversion projects with S subversion includes. Sounds logical, doesn't it? You're wrong. No, I'm just kidding. That's uh, from Mr. Wizard, if you haven't seen it. <laughs> Sounds logical. It does sound logical. So I'm assuming that subversion includes are a lot like Git uh, submodules. GitHub submodules. But yeah, you can do all sorts of things to create uh, libraries that can be included in separate ways. That's a good idea, though. It makes it easy to work with, or easier to work with. No idea. I don't know GitHub. Yeah, you can basically use submodules in GitHub, and they can, uh, you can effectively clone certain versions of other programs into your repo so that you can use them. They're kind of hell, but everything like that is. Oh yeah. All right. So why is this not a working result? Why does this have to be an allocated symbol? And the idea is that it's because it's going to be a child owned by the working result. Right? So what if we do this? Okay, I think I may know what has went wrong last time. And if it goes wrong this time as well, I have an idea of what to do. Looks good to me. Allocate two children. Assign them to our working result, our given result that already exists and then update our working result to actually assign to parse into this child because we need to parse this expression 
Lol, let's see if I can get it to work. Heyo, Eternal Wild Fox is doing it. Doing that subversion, including. That's a great idea. So the idea now would be that this works. And it does work. That's fine. Is this fine? So why is this not fine? What's the difference? We have a node allocate and then a type assignment. Node allocate with a type assignment. We can remove that into the working result. We can remove the children from the Vardacal and give them to the working result. Working result is already done, so we can just be done with that. I think I deleted that up there by mistake. I definitely did. Let's see if I can get this back. So working result would equal var reassign. Hopefully I spelled those right. And we get the error once more. So the error is obviously down here. So let's just... I think this is the error. I think we have some working result not being reset properly or... I don't know. We're going to look. So, yeah, I definitely need to do that. Yeah, see, so our working result, for some reason, is assigned this value, which is not good. And it's because of this environment get into working result when we should not be. Why do we environment get into working result? It's just because it's a, we just used it as a node because we had it and we didn't allocate one. So this is actually type value, right? Then we can say, hey, this symbol does not refer to a type. Invalid type symbol, would that help? I don't think that would help. I think invalid type is good enough. Ooh, we've got some stuff. Grammar says the tuple syntax is so easy and common, parentheses, one comma five, close parentheses. That's very common. That's like Python. Grammar to Parseboy says, but currently I can only deduce the type, not declare the tuple type. That makes sense. Vimi says, can't you like template it or however it works in C sharp? Oh, Christ. Grammar to Parseboy says, I don't know what you mean. So I think in C sharp, there's like a, like a templating generic system. So can you like, I think VME is referring, like you could use a generic with two types within it. VME says, yeah, sorry. I always avoided C sharp, C sharp so much. I don't even know the terminology. Well, no. You're good to avoid C sharp. It's not the worst thing in the world to do. Hey, look, we fixed it, everybody. We fixed it. We just have to free this extra node now that we don't need. Done. Same with the type symbol. Do we ever use that? We do. We set in the environment the type symbol. That's right. So in the variables environment, this variable symbol, the variable name, is bound to a type symbol, the type name. That's valid. So that uses verbatim. Whoops, I don't know what I just opened. So if we look at type symbol, it shouldn't be freed. And so it's created here. Where is that environment set? Yeah, it's at the same scope. And is there an error out in between? There is this variable binding error in between. So technically, type symbol is allocated above. 
free of error out. Truthfully, here's what we should do. We should not worry about freeing these things at all. And we should, allo we should, okay. Okay. Grammar to Parser Boy says, I don't have implemented yet the tuple type parsing in my type name parser. No problem at all, only not implemented. <laughs> That's such a programmer thing to say. Like, oh, it's no problem. I just haven't started on it at all and don't have no idea how to do it. But, you know, it's fine. <laughs> Fail and successful. Success was unavoided. <laughs> That's so good. I, I... Grammar to Parser Boy. Vimi says, to Grammar to Parser Boy, too much under Microsoft's umbrella. Yeah, I'm the same way. I avoid. That's why I started putting the projects I really, really care about preserving, not only on GitHub. They're on multiple remotes. Right? That way, even if Microsoft is like, haha, we have all your code and it belongs to us now, even if you licensed it open source. It's like, well, what we're going to do is just move to this other website. <laughs> but yeah, Microsoft is definitely a monopoly that just tries to make everything proprietary. It's terrible. Grammar to Parser Boy adds to me and says, but since the compiler is open source, the community has more impact. It's true, they have more impact, but they still decide what to merge and stuff. If I need more control, I go to C++. If I need more Java-like stuff, I use Kotlin. Or Java, if it's unavoidable. <laughs> Avoid Java at all costs. <laughs> so good. Grammar at Vimi. Then you can switch to backlang in future. No Microsoft umbrella. Vimi at Grammar. C-sharp just doesn't have a place on my personal tool belt. Yeah, it depends on the programs you make entirely, I think. And what you learned on, of course. So... How... How do we do this? Do you think we have, like... I guess I haven't described what I'm doing. So when we allocate a node, right? Currently we actually do a calic and allocate the singular node, which is fine, but it means that we have to free the node and it's kind of a mess, right? It would be great if we didn't have to free the node, but this would be effectively we have to implement a garbage collector. Which I don't know if I want to get into yet. Also, does this work? Can we free again because we're no longer pointing to ourselves? Yes, we can. Look at us. Woohoo! Oops. Look at all the simplification. This is wonderful. This is kind of all a bit confusing, but I'm just gonna... I think that makes sense. And then this is the continuation part. This is the setting up the output part. This all makes sense. This all makes sense. This symbol. If we ever want to actually return symbols as a literal value, we're going to need to uh, deal with that. But I don't think in this language we're ever going to do that. Vimi says, I have nothing against C-sharp. I just don't see the need since it's basically C++. C++ spin on Java with wheels and trunk. <laughs> Eternal wild foxes. Yeah, I know how it works. Got the subversion externals to work. Nice. Hopefully that means your library is able to be used more easy for yourself. You can include it using subversion. I'll have to learn how to use subversion if it's open source. 
Vimi says, I had no doubt in my mind, my man. That's right. Eternal gonna get it done. If he says he gonna do it, oh man, it's gonna get done. It's gonna get done, I'm telling you. It will be done. I just want to thank everybody. It is open source. Awesome. I'll have to check it out. Subversion is open source. I do want to take some time and thank everybody for watching. I very much appreciate it. As you can see in the top right, we are eight followers away from becoming a Twitch affiliate, so I'd greatly appreciate you smacking that follow button or whatever they say on YouTube these days. Thank you. And that is all. We will continue. Anyway, it kind of sucks to have to free these nodes. So it would be it it would kind of be better to just say these are the ones in use, the rest of them get rid of. And that's a mark and sweep garbage collector. How does everybody feel about a garbage collector today? We may not have time, so we may just have to start it and then stop, because I'm going to have to go here in about... Yeah, we do not have time today. <laughs> I need to learn to look at the time before I bring things up. We don't have time today, but what we do have time for is... um. I think we could start to think about how operators work. I think this is good. We'll do some conceptual abstract thinking at the end of the stream here. I did not realize how late it got. <laughs> My bad. Grammar to Parser Boy says C has no shared pointer or something like that. Oh, Grammar. <laughs> you, uh, you come from a different, a whole different world. <laughs> C does not have any shared pointer. Nothing like that. Um, there's not even, like, destructors or constructors, you know what I mean? Sim on the Swede, hey, also, can I just say, I want to make a public apology. I keep calling this person in chat who just chatted, I really appreciate them, Sim on the Swede. And I'm pretty sure I'm just, um, fairly dense, like my skull is very thick, because it's Simon, is it not? It's Simon the Swede. And I'm just dumb? Is it Sim or is it Simon? Because if it's Simon, I'm just... My skull is very thick. Vimi adds grammar and says, Shared pointer is a concept of smart pointers. You can implement it on your own pretty easily. Moralilu says, C is getting a null pointer, though. Is it really? C already has null. What's going to happen? It's going to have null pointer and null? That's scary. Grammar says C++ has, C-sharp don't need. <laughs> Simon the Swede says, correct, my name is Simon, love. So I just want to make a public apology for butchering this person's name, right? This person, Simon the Swede. It is Simon. It is not Sim on the Swede. That makes no sense, and I don't know why I thought that, so I, I apologize, Simon. <laughs> I'll, I'll call you Simon from now on, if that's okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Shared pointer is basically a struct with a pointer and a ref, ref counter. Yeah, exactly. It's, you, can, you can create ref, <laughs> ref putters in C. It's definitely all doable. It's just not uh, worth it, usually. <laughs> Unless you have many, like, a very heavily shared object system. Simon says, no worries at all, haha, <laughs> love. Aw, thank you so much, Simon. Oh, and Simon's first message was, my favorite compiler maker, love. You're so sweet, Simon. Thank you for showing up. I really appreciate it. We actually did succeed at the title of the stream today. If you'd uh, like to actually check that out, we can go through what we changed. But thank you so much for showing up, Simon. It's so awesome. Moralilu says, C also just got hashtag embed. What is that? Grammar to Parser Boy says, I am my favorite compiler maker, Kappa. <laughs> you need that, like, Breaking Bad Gus meme where he's straightening his tie and he's like, we are not the same. <laughs> That's so good. Vimi says, if you want to write game code in C, 
where your objects live extremely long, then you probably should implement your own shared pointer. Absolutely. If you're, if you're writing a game in C and you don't have the concept of a shared pointer, I would be impressed. Like, how did they do that? It's kind of hard to even make a rendering engine without, like, an efficient rendering engine, I should say, without just butchering <laughs> memory allocation. You have to seriously think about it, because 3D models are huge. It sucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. What was I going to look up? I feel like I was looking something up, and then I forgot. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, C. C has a proposal for hashtag embed in the open standard. Ooh. Very cool. Oh, it's in C23. So according to this website, the pht.dev, I don't know if this is right, but hashtag embed is in C23. So, please put my data in my god dang executable and stop doing crazy nonsense, the feature. Okay, this makes a lot of sense. Oh, ooh, very cool. You can literally embed a WAV file. Oh, so it's just raw bytes. You just embed the raw bytes into the file. Oh, that's cool. Eternal Wild Fox says, 3D models are complex. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of triangles, as it turns out. A lot of triangles. Vimi says, efficiency? Just slap more of them gigahertz and coolers into your system. Vimi says, at Eternal Wild Fox, it depends. Well, of course. You can have a, a square 3D model that isn't even 3D. It's just like two triangles that create a quad. Technically, it's a 3D model. It's just not a good one. <laughs> Vimi says, 12 years later, new C standard. Pray gas <laughs> That's right. So you can now just embed sound files directly. That's This is going to help so much for game dev. This is very cool. And verify it's a riff. Very cool. What benefit is this to me? How would this not be a benefit? Are you kidding? And people don't like it. Obviously. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. I just looked up hashtag embed in C, and this is the what came up. I don't know if it's official or anything. That's just, uh, that's my source. I cited it. <laughs> we have actually replaced recursion entirely in our parser. We no longer recurse at all. This is so awesome. Our stack will never grow. I really like how much this one simplified. Like, we had like eight lines here that just got simplified to two. It's so awesome. All we have to do is continue parsing into the value expression of the assignment. So sweet. And when it's a reassignment of existing variable, it's a different whole result. This is good. The control flow is a little confusing. Vimi says, what can you add to C? It's already perfect. I would like to see, like, what people are adding into C. Like, what, what would be the best ideas in the world? All algorithms and data structures teachers just cried a bit when you said that about recursion. <laughs> Listen, recursion is still what we're doing. Eternal Wild Fox says, class... I think he's addressing us. <laughs> but Vimi, you're right. But what we're doing is still recursion. It's just a different design pattern applied to the same... Uh, so the functionality is the same, right? But we applied a different design pattern. So instead of recursion, this is a continuation. And it's, it's beautiful because the stack never grows. Never grows. <laughs> Vimi says, at Eternal Wild Fox, no... Eternal Wild Fox says, oh, <laughs> like the Pikachu, me Pikachu meme. Vimi says, god damn, no. Moralilu says, recursion is always the best way. No. 
That's how you get stack overflows. You can't recurse. Stack overflows are no good. Recursion, no good. <laughs> Unless you have a language. Oh, exactly. Vimi just said it. At Moralilu, tail recursion. Does anybody know about tail call recursion? Anybody at all? I think I wrote some Lisp to do with that at some point. Effectively, yeah. <laughs> Vimi says, I do. Grammar to Parser Boy says, yes. Eternal Wild Fox says, recursion comes from recurse. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> it's true, but when you have tail call recursion, your return value can actually just be the same return value. So you never actually have to grow the stack because you don't have to return here and do anything else. It's the last thing you're doing. So your return address, if you imagine your stack, your stack could be like, also, what am I doing? This could be a return address and then nothing, the end of the stack, right? And then as a function call, it's return address, return address, right? And the stack would keep growing. But when you're the last thing you do is the function call within a function, then this return address actually isn't needed because there's no actual nothing to do here. So the compiler or the evaluator can just remove this and understand that the stack never has to grow. You can actually just keep uh, changing, reapplying your parameters and calling the same function into the same return address. Which is an example of what this square root Newton does in Lisp. See how it calls itself, and that's the last thing it ever does. Or it returns x, <laughs> right? So this says if some fancy thing to do with square roots, right? Is So if this condition happens, just return x, and then it'll return it to the first call. But if otherwise, just call yourself again with different parameters. Eternal Wild Fox says, damn, I didn't even write code yet for the math expression engine, lol. <laughs> to be fair, that's a, that's a very complicated task. Oh, but yeah, you can see how this square root requires not just the number that you're getting the square root of. It requires some, like, uh, values that increment and change over time. Your epsilon always stays the same, but your, uh, your x will continue to change your answer. An A, if that makes sense. So all this data gets passed not on the stack, but instead gets crunched down into one single call because this value is the same as this return value. Eternal Wild Fox, I think I have it up and running in a few hours. Oh my god. You're so speedy. Eternal Wild, <laughs> Eternal Wild Fox is so fast. You may be eternal. Do you sleep? Lamau. <laughs> Very cool. It's probably not a good idea to generate code if we hit an error. Why is that happening? See, we break because we want to... See, we don't actually keep track. So we're just going to have to say this up here. Okie dokie. And if it's none, then we can generate code and stuff. Probably after we print out the node. And then we would like to free things no matter what. I think that makes sense. Yeah, so now we don't code gen and if there's not if there's an error. That makes sense. Vimi says at Eternal Wild Fox, do you like code one file with your hands and another one with your feet at the same time? 
Eternal says, only with mine hands. <laughs> so awesome. It is impressive. I don't know how you you get so many so much done in so many different projects. My brain isn't that uh, impressive. <laughs> okay, so now if I went to simple, comment out the error line. Simple, not example. Then we actually generate code. We get a none at the end because we allocate and then finish. I think that's fine. We don't have to worry about a none node, an extra none at the end of the program. It's kind of like a null terminator. Who cares? Eternal Wild Fox says, the weird thing was my bosses always found me slow. You see, that's a trick that bosses and management works. No matter how good you do, you're always just below optimal, right? It's like, well, but I did so good. They'll never say you did a good job because then that means you may try not try to do a better job ever. Grammar to parser boy. <laughs> Links this, Joe. <laughs> That's at eternal wild fox. <laughs> Coding away. You can't see his feet, but they're doing the same thing. <laughs> Vimi says exactly. Eternal laughs. So good. We're coming up on two hours of streaming. I really have to go soon. It's almost 11.30. This was good. We removed recursion entirely from our parser. Yeah, we fixed a few things. So this would be parser, continuation, bug fixes. I could say bug fix, parser continuation, and we'll do that. Uh, there was a few errors with parser continuation that have now been, <laughs> that have now been, uh, I don't know, eradicated. Why not? Grammar says, in Germany, it's 8.30 p.m., so I'm so tired. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad I could entertain you this evening. Grammar says, same. Best evening helper is GNT. Gunt. I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it's, it's helpful enough. <laughs> Maybe it's like a, a coffee or an energy drink. Eternal Wild Fox says, I have the same time as you, Grammar. I'm from the ne Netherlands. Vini says gin and tonic. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not an alcoholic. I didn't recognize the abbreviation. Oh. I still have another 10 years before I fall into a deep depression and alcoholism. Grammar says, so we are neighbors. Haha. <laughs> Vimi says... Ooh, I've just been to Utrecht last month. Hopefully I didn't butcher that city name. That's in the Netherlands, right? Dutchland? Eternal says more or less. Nice. Probably in response to We Are Neighbors. <laughs> that have now been eradicated. Resulting in a simplification of the code. Less allocations. Hooray. So we have less allocations, and yeah, that's about it. Less memory leaks. <laughs> Good enough for me. Push that. We did a commit to commit, now we do a pushy pushy. Perfect. It is now live on GitHub, all this code we have written. You can go run it. Now, all you need is a C compiler for this one, right? Hopefully it's documented. Ooh, I haven't loaded org mode today at all. Isn't that incredible? What have we been doing? 
when getting work done? Awful. Yeah, we just need CMake and a C compiler. So if you have CMake and a C compiler, or are willing to download two programs, and use a terminal, you will be able to actually build and run this compiler for yourself, and even a compile example. So if you'd like to do that, be sure to check out the GitHub down below for the code. It is completely open source under the MIT license. You could even fork the, uh, the repository and work on your own compiler based on this one from any stage. Not saying it's a good idea. Eternal Wild Fox puts in a, what looks to be a GitHub command <laughs> and then a P. If you're looking for the GitHub link, it's down below in the About section of Twitch. <laughs> Vimi says, add Eternal Wild Fox. We will make it work. <laughs> Alrighty. We have just passed two hours of streaming. I want to thank everybody so much for watching. Eternal says, yeah, I already saw that GitHub link. Oh, nice. But yeah, thank you everybody so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in. We have removed recursion from this parser. We now use continuations only. No more recursion. We parse entirely in a single, single stack frame, which is each expression in its own stack frame, which is rather impressive. It never grows. So this means that we will never stack overflow. We've prevented our program from ever stack overflowing. This is beautiful. We have prevented uh, recursion causing slowdowns where we don't need them when we can just do a continue. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. So uh, yeah, we have used the continuation design pattern and replaced the recursion design pattern in order for our hardware to operate in a more efficient manner. That's beautiful. We did great today. Oh, Elite Monkey 038. <laughs> hey, how's it going, Elite Monkey? We're just about shutting down the stream. I'm so sorry. How are you doing today? Thanks for tuning in. What's going on with you? Eternal Wild Fox says, nice. Now I can program. Your stream was a nice break. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm glad it was. I'm good. It was. I'm glad it was a nice break. I can't talk. Vimi says, "Jump on Discord with us for an after party." Hell yeah! <laughs> Vimi's hosting an after party in the Discord. That's awesome. Be sure to go check out Vimi in the Discord. That would be a lot of fun, because we are just about shutting down shop. Elite Monkey says, "I'm good. How about you?" Uh, I'm doing pretty good. We did great today. We did what the title says. We replaced recursion entirely. So before where we called parse expression within parse expression, it's now just a continue. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And we did that here as well. This is now also just a continue instead of a nested parse expression call. That means we will never stack overflow. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I do want to thank all of you for coming out. Elite Monkey, Eternal Wild Fox. We got the VIP VME in here, the OG donator. Baller. Thank you, VME, for showing up. Thank you, Elite Monkey. Thank you, Eternal Wild Fox. Thank you, Grammar. Thank you, Nolan. Thank you, Moralilu, we had in here earlier. We had Simon in here. We had, uh, who else? Who else? We had Landar in here, Landar XT. Everyone, thank you so much for coming out. We had, uh, we had Roger Zanoni as well. He said one thing earlier. We had Roger Zanoni. Vimi gives the rock symbol, the metal hands. I give it right back. Thank you, Vimi. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Be sure to hit that follow on Twitch. We are going to get to affiliate so soon. Thank you, everybody. Be sure to join that Discord. Make friends. Have fun. There's going to be an after party. So go check out the after party with Vimi. It's going to be dope. And uh, I'll see you next time I go live. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, check out the donate button down below if you truly have that extra cash and feel like I deserve anything at all <laughs> for doing this. Because I don't. But I thank you so much if you do. And any and all donations will be shout out on stream. Bye, Lens, says Elite Monkey. I will see you as well. See you next stream, everybody.
Bye bye. Have fun. See you in the Discord. Feel free to message me, ask any questions anytime. Keep it real and uh, be excellent to each other and party on, dudes.